Hey everyone and welcome back to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. On this video, we're doing the quest, Memory Painting. You pick up this quest by completing your first memory painting, uh, except for the one that was part of the main quest, that one doesn't count, but any other one will do it. So, let's start in the King Lore Forest. We're gonna go ahead and travel to the Braided Vine and then southwest of there, about right here, we can find a memory painting. So, let's go. All right, we're going this way. Ready to ride? All right, so we're pretty much gonna fly to the south here, to uh, sort of the border of the world, to the cliffs. And then from there, we'll go west. And Talisa could use a little bit of energy. Let's see. What do we got for? Probably some fruit. Let's go spineberry fruit. You like that, don't you, Talisa? All right, so the memory painting is going to be over on this little rock outcropping. And your Navi senses do pick up the memory paintings. So, those will help you find them. Now these ones are a little confusing, you actually have to move outside of the circle in the direction of the spotlight. The mighty rocks floating in the sky. They're quiet now, but it's like the wind brings a distant memory of them. Rumbling, brushing against each other. Is this a tale of their own power as they float above everything? Or, or is this a whale as if they want to reunite with the land below? 
This place... It's so... inviting. Almost urging to sit. To take in this view. Remember every line of it. Inscribe it to memory. Like there's a tale that awaits to be told. Is... Is this how Saren do find their stories? There must be more spots like this. And more stories to tell. Alright, so with that we got our quest, Memory Painting. We also got a new journal entry in World Knowledge. Under King Lore Forest Knowledge, that would be... The Boundless Range. Memory paintings are an old Sadentu tradition that the surviving Sadentu children do not clearly remember and they're now trying to reinvent for themselves. These entries contain your own speculation on attempting to recreate this tradition within the beautiful landscapes of Pandora. The Sadentu believed that in order to tell stories about each Navi clan, they must learn the ways of that clan. They had a conviction that no lore can be simply translated into words, music, or dance, but must be lived through, experienced firsthand. When the Sadentu clan disappeared, many of their stories were lost and forgotten. But as long as even a few Sadentu remain, these stories still can be recovered. Learned by the young Sadentu from their ancestors through the Tarshu. Now, as the young Sadentu roam the western frontier again, will they be able to reclaim the lost stories? Or will they create new ones and pass them on? Keeping the Sadentu legacy alive? Alright, then we also got the quest. Memory painting. I found a strange sitting spot with a beautiful vista. Somehow, I felt the urge to commit every detail of that view to my memory, so I could share it with others someday. Is this a Sadentu trait? So, complete memory paintings across the western frontier. There are 13 in total. That was our first one. Once again, not counting the one from the main quest. Alright, so let's go find another. We'll go north of here. We're gonna go ahead and fast travel to the Falls Field Lab, and we've got a memory painting right there. Okay. It's to the northwest. See, our senses are picking it up. Right here.
the water here. The rivers and streams. They run divided. But eventually, they will meet in some greater body of water. Meet only to get divided again and continue their endless run. Isn't the story of each of us exactly like this water? All right, so we got another new entry in the journal. Wood Sprite Arches. Memory paintings are an old Sadentu tradition that the surviving Sadentu children do not clearly remember and are now trying to reinvent for themselves. These entries contain your own speculation on attempting to recreate this tradition within the beautiful landscapes of Pandora. The Sadentu or the Sadentu used to learn the stories of others, like the Aranahe, and carry them further to other clans beyond the King Lore Forest. These stories are like water in King Lore Forest, small individual streams that constantly cross as they run along, only to divide again and finally meet within Ewa, the great pool where they join with the memories of their ancestors. Now, with the Sadentu, the Aranahe lore becomes forgotten outside the forest. Or now, without the Sadentu, the Aranahe lore becomes forgotten outside the forest. All right, and this poor guy was suffering that entire time. I was wondering why he was making so much noise. Oh, well. Hey. So, urgently trying to help him, I scared him as I approached. Let's see if we can soothe him. You're all right, buddy. You're okay. Don't worry. Whoa. Let me help you. That's better, isn't it? All right, got a spare part for that. And we saved him. All right, moving on to another memory painting. Let's go... Let's go to over gentle water and from there we'll head east. Strange clothes. Is that the fashion now? Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so it should be right up here on the ridge. Somewhere around here, maybe right over here. There it is.
This land. This beauty drawn in so many shapes and forms. Such incredible wonders all around. They need to be protected. This is something the Sarentu wanted everybody to remember. All right, let's check out the entry for that. Stone Blade Ridge. Now this first uh, paragraph's just gonna repeat over and over again, so we're gonna skip that. Like many other Navi clans, the Sadentu probably had fearless and cunning warriors among them, but solving a conflict with force had always been the last resort for the clan. Instead, the Sadentu would settle disputes, or even avert them, by spreading truths and exposing lies. The young Sadan II from Tap know better than any Navi how adept the RDA is at inventing lies and half-truths. To convince the clans to fight against the RDA with weapons, the Sadan II must first let everyone realize the real danger their mutual enemy poses. Alright, time for our next memory painting. That's going to be down... I don't know if it's in the Waterway Valley? No, it's in the... Um... Let's see, it's in the Rising Spires. So it's right there. Let's go ahead and fast travel to Sunshade Silks. How oh, does Sadnop always have a new anecdote to share every time I see him? He is the cocoon that keeps on giving silk. What was it this time? He just went on and on about Zakru Dairy, a wheel of rotten cheese he found in the dark bottom of a cave many years ago. He promised it was quite a delicacy. Must learn to listen. Okay, so this one's pretty close. We're just gonna go on foot. South and slightly east. Hit the vein pod. Oh, we got uh, some predators over there. We'll give them a wide berth. And also here's some RDA nearby. But we've made it to the river, which means we're very close. Oh, hit another vein pod. And another one. I'm hitting them all. Alright. Oh, there it is right over there.
This place, the sounds alone, are enough to paint a picture worth describing to everyone. The crashing of the falling water, the stream running nearby, the rustling of the leaves, the creaking of the woods, the whooshing of the wind between the rocks. And the smell of freshness, so alien to places like Tap. All right, so we got another entry. We're going to get an entry every single time. This time, the rising spires. The forest, the water, the wind. The sounds of life in King Lore Forest surround the Aranahe since birth and translate into the clan's weaving, dances, and songs. What if one day all these sounds, all this life, will remain only a memory? A horrible thought, but with the RDA ravaging the King Lore Forest, it might become a reality, as it might for other clans too. Alright, so that's all of the memory paintings in the King Lore Forest. Let's move on to the Upper Plains. And we'll start right there. So, let's fast travel to Walker's Haven. All right, so this way, out on the lake. And it's gonna be right over here on this little island.
All life in the upper plains is shaped by the wind. The land, the trees, even the mighty stone bends under the ceaseless gales. And not just that. To think of it, the whole Zeswa culture, their lives, their memories and stories, all follow the direction of the wind. But how can other clans know about it? Now that the Sarantu aren't here to tell them. Alright, more world knowledge. Mother of Rivers. For Navi clans from other regions, the Upper Plains may seem a harsh and alien place to live in. The Zeswa, an equally harsh and alien people. Yet the Zeswa thrive in this region. With their dance fights, kites, fire cheese, and the Zakru beasts, the clan leads a way of life unique to the western frontier. Before the Sadantu disappeared, they would tell other clans about the Zeswa and the true riches of the Upper Plains, creating the aura of reverence for the ways of the, the, for the, ways of the nomadic clan and the nature of their land. Alright, let's go to our next memory painting. That's going to be way over here, just east of Pillar Shadow. It's probably close enough where we could just go on foot, but let's go ahead and take Talisi. Navi senses already picked it up. And it's right there.
The planes. They seem so fast and clear. As though lifeless. And yet, life thrives here. It may be obscure, hidden under the protective rocks that shelter it from storms. Yet it's there, waiting for the stories to be told about it. So this time we got Awa's Reach. How much of Pandora is still undiscovered? There could be other lands, perhaps places at sea, underground, or up in the skies. Places where no Navi has ever been. Not every clan sees reason in going too far away from their homes, discovering new lands and meeting other Navi. Yet generations of Sadantu had this urge to see more of the world, to visit unbelievable places and tell stories about them. Alright, our next memory painting is going to be down here in the fog, so let's go ahead and fast travel to Laughter's Retreat, and from there we'll go southwest. Let's go, Pelissi. All right, so this way. I think we're heading straight towards. In fact, that might be it right there. Yep, that's it. You can see we're picking up other things as well, but let's just focus on the memory paintings for now.
to live in the upper plains. Guess you need to be as resilient as these rocks. To withstand the devastating storms and the scorching sun. And be ready to shelter those who need protection. To teach them to survive in this harsh place. Okay, that one was Steps Cradle West. Awa protects all life from the forces of nature, guiding it to safe places, sheltering it, and helping every living thing to rely on each other. It may be that by learning this wisdom from Awa, the Navi could come together, join their strength, and protect their common home from any enemy, even as dangerous as the RDA. Alrighty, from here, we're gonna go pretty much directly south and follow the river to a waterfall. Let's fly. So, follow this river down here. And we should be seeing it very soon. Right there. Looks like this is where the water from the upper plains 
falls into the Kinglore forest, bringing life to everything below. The Sarentu must have passed this way over the years, bringing stories and news from all over Pandora. I wonder if they stopped here each time to take in this breathtaking view. Steps Cradle South. The stories the Sadden Two Clan used to tell were not only reflections of the nature around, they were also reflections of the Navi themselves. Other clans would listen to Sadden Two stories and music, watch their performances, and see that other Navi are not as different as they may seem to each other. Of course, every clan leads their own way of life and has a unique perspective on things, but they all used to love the Sadden Two stories since they were children. And whenever there was a conflict between Navi, the Sadentu acted as diplomats, as liaisons between the disagreeing parties, once again helping the clans hear the truths about each other and ultimately avoid bloodshed. Okay, so that's all of the memory paintings in the Upper Plains. We're moving on to the Clouded Forest. Let's start with this memory painting right next to the perch. So it's this way to the west. Memory painting. The watchful stone sentinels towering in the fog. How old are they? What power does it take to raise them from the ground? How many Navi tales of mysterious creatures have these giants inspired? Alright, so this is world knowledge, obviously, in the clouded forest. We have the cut east. The Kametiri have a wealth of stories about enigmatic, unbelievable creatures that secretly live in all the hidden corners of Clouded Forest. A vengeful swamp creature, a giant rocky figure strolling through the fog, a chatty thing with a mouth on a furry body. These may be just stories made up to teach Kametiri children a specific lesson, but no story comes out of nothing. 
Perhaps they are just reflections of Pandora's nature. Old rock formations, swamp moss, shadowy woods. Or maybe there is more going on in the clouded forest than meets the eye. Alright, our next memory painting is right next to Hydro Oil Extractor Bravo. So, this way we'll just go on foot, it's not too far. Already my senses have picked it up. And here we are. The great cut divides the land here, like a footprint of the ages that shaped this forest. Now, it's a path paved for life to spread across the land, and a message for the RDA that this land will withstand any attempt to desecrate it. The Cut West. Uh, so this is just a repeat of the previous one for some reason. So they both say the same thing, although this one says slightly less. Alright, so our next memory painting is gonna be just east of the refuge. See it right down there.
These vines must have been growing for countless years. How many stories go through here? As generations of Awa's children use these for a safe passage. Steps Cradle. Even when not connected to Awa, all Navi can feel her presence everywhere. They see her great design in every shape that surrounds them. The Sadan too saw stories in these shapes and chose to carry them from one clan to another. Just like Awa's presence, these stories are everywhere, waiting to be noticed and retold. Alright, our next memory painting is going to be to the southeast of the Crimson Refuge. So, let's get Talisi's help. It is so foggy right now. Oh, we got a Sailfin Goliath over there. Alright, so it's gonna be down here. You can see we're already picking it up with our senses. Right here. The water runs so gently under these majestic heavy arches, embracing the forest. It's easy to imagine how it flows further into the plains and beyond the Kinglore Forest, spreading everywhere 
the tale of its kind persistence. All right, that entry was the Cascading Stone South. As the water flows gently, the wounds heal, and Awa keeps everything connected, perfectly in balance. This has been true for many generations of Navi. As long as water continues to flow on Pandora, Navi will have the chance to persevere and not let the RDA desecrate their home. All right, and that leads us to our final memory painting, which is going to be over here. So we'll head to the Welcoming Hearth and go east from there. Oh, and I could use some energy. Let's go with Pheromonic Remedy. Okay, so down here in this ravine, it's going to be overlooking it. So I think it's right over there or so, maybe over here. We're close. Navi senses just picked it up. And it's right here. Okay, our last memory painting. The entryway to the clouded forest. Mysterious and beautiful. These mountains and woods, they feel oddly welcoming and serene. 
It's almost like coming home and seeing familiar faces. <sighs> this feeling... The incredible feeling of being embraced by Pandora. The beauty of every tree, rock, and river etched forever in my mind. Everybody, the Sarentu, the other clans, the Resistance, they too should see these wonders this way and pass this knowledge to those who come after. All right, we did all of the memory paintings. Our quest is complete. And we did get one final world knowledge entry, but this one surprisingly is in the upper plains, even though we are in the clouded forest. So that would be the Cascading Stones North. Rinella remembers the image of an elder Sadden to storyteller waving their hands vigorously, describing nature, events, and heroes. Dancers and musicians would accompany them, performing their own art to reinforce the story. Now, Sadden too are few, and all they have are words. Is that enough to describe all these booming woods, rivers, and sky? Can one person interpret all this chaotic, ineffable beauty, having only words and the movement of their body at their disposal? Can simple hand gestures let people see the majesty of the foggy mountains, the sky, and the woods? Or they, sh or they should follow in the footsteps of their ancestors and discover and adopt new ways to tell stories? Okay, well, we've completed all the memory paintings, we've finished our quest, and we are all done here. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.